Welcome to church. Come on, put those hands together. Let's worship God. Merry Christmas. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing on the plains and the mountains in. Christmas Eve at the journey. There's no other place I would rather be. It is so great to be here with you. Thank you to those who are joining us online. You know, Christmas is a time to remember. It's the time that we remember the moment when Jesus stepped out of heaven into our mess to make a way out for us. I mean, do you ever just stop to think about that? The Son of God. The creator of the universe became an embryo. Does that just blow your mind? Romans 11:36 says that everything comes from him, everything exists by his power, and everything is intended for his glory. The son of God, the one who holds everything together was dependent on his mother for nourishment. Sometimes I don't think we realize all that Jesus left behind when he came to earth to make a way for us to be made right with God. And, and I think about that, that reality, and, and it overwhelms us. Max Licato said that Jesus gave up his place in heaven so that you could take yours. So what do we do with this amazing gift? We receive it, and we live a life of gratitude. We live every day as a living thank you to him 
for all that he has done for us. And a heart of gratitude produces generosity. A heart that's truly grateful is a heart that's generous. And in just a few moments, we'll have an opportunity to give. And, and that is an act of worship. It is one way that we say thank you to Jesus for all that he has done for us. We'll have the front open for you when the worship team comes to lead us again. If you want to give in person, we have baskets available down front. Or you can give online. Simply go to thejourneyfamily.com and the giving tab there. But we have a chance to express worship. That it, worship is saying thank you to God in every way possible through the giving and serving and every day that we live, saying thank you, Jesus, for making it possible. You know, before Jesus was a baby in a manger, he was a king on a throne. In eternity past, he was thinking and planning and preparing so that you and I could be set free and we could be forgiven. And as we prepare to give, our leadership has asked us to pray about being a part of Heart for the House. This is a year-end offering where we ask anyone who calls the journey home to give a one-time sacrificial gift. And this allows us to make up for any deficiencies that we've experienced this year. And God has been faithful. God's people have been faithful. But it's been a hard year. People have felt the effects. The church has felt the effects. And this offering allows us to fill in those gaps and step into 2021 ready to continue reaching people in our communities and beyond. So if God lays it on your heart to be a part of that, you can give in the experience. Again, just indicate heart for the house, or you can give online and choose the category with that same name. But as we pray tonight over this offering, be grateful that Christmas doesn't end with a baby in a manger, but it ends with an empty tomb that provides the power you and I need to face the uncertainties of life. Let's pray together. God, we just stand before you right now truly grateful that you were willing to give your son. And Jesus, thank you that you said yes, you were willing to come and lay down your life for us. You laid aside your privileges, you laid aside your position, you laid aside your rights as the son of God and came in a lowly manger so that we could spend eternity with you. And so now in response to that, we bring our tithes, we bring our offerings. We pray that the, what we say and what we do would glorify you. Not a man, not a church, but your son, Jesus Christ. And if anyone in this room or watching online tonight doesn't know you in a very real and personal way, I pray they would encounter you. Not great worship, not awesome people, but Jesus Christ. It's for his glory and his fame that we do all that we do, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. This is for you, but it's about him. Behold the great mystery being revealed to us all. The sign in the sky, the voice from the shore, the moment on the water, the presence in the room, this is for you, but it's about him, the anticipation, the celebration, the long-awaited, anticipated return, rejoicing because he's already come. This, this is for you, but it's about him. The ancient of days, the kingdom that has come, the kingdom that is to come, the high priest, the perfecter, the love and light, cascader, this, this is for you but it's about him, his payment for your peace, his atonement for your failures, his temporary for your eternity. This, this is for you, but it's about him. He's the promise in your storm, the light in the darkness, the way through the wilderness, the strength in your weakness. This, this is for you but it's about him. May we join with a choral of angels proclaiming glory in the highest. Peace, peace has come. Love, love has come. Heaven, heaven has come.
promised Messiah. Angels, let your soul.
the world but it couldn't fill me man's empty praise and treasures that fade I never even loved yeah. then you came along and put me back together desire is now satisfied yeah. hearing your love. If you believe it, I need to hear you sing it out. Hey, oh, there's nothing say, better than you. There's nothing say, better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you see them all, and you still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. Not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Sing it out, oh, there's nothing better than 
need you to help me sing this part out. Let's lift it up. Say, see you turn morning to dancing. And you give beauty for ashes. See you turn shame into glory. Cause you're the only one who can sing it out. You turn morning to dancing. Yeah, and you give beauty for ashes, and you turn shame into glory, cause you're the only one who can. You turn grave, you turn grave into God, and you turn bones into us. Turn seas into highways. You're the only one. Yeah, yeah. You're the only one. There's no one better than the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, I declare that you are worthy of our worship. You are worthy of our praise. You are a great and mighty God. There is no one like you. You are the reason we rejoice in this crazy, chaotic season. Father, you are our refuge, our strength, our rock our light, our defense, our avenger, our redeemer, our helper, our hope, our savior. Your greatness is more than we could ever comprehend. More than we could ever wrap around our minds, but it's not outside of our reach. And so church, as our worship team kicks it back in one more time, I want you to lose your mind and praise the only one who is worthy of our praise. Come on, church. Let's go. Oh, there's nothing say, better than you. There's nothing hey. better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Come on, y'all sing it out, lift it up. Oh, see, oh, there's nothing, see, better, better than you. There's nothing, see, nothing, better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing, nothing is better than you. One more time, let's lift that up. Oh, say, oh, oh there's nothing, better than you. Better than you, Lord, there's nothing, hey. nothing is better than you.
turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the, you're the only one who gave. Then again, you turn grave, you turn grave into God. You turn bones into armies. Yeah. You turn seas. Father, you are the only one who can change a life. You are the only one that can redeem a marriage. You are the only one who can take someone who is addicted and, Father, transform their life. That is the power of our God. And we gather tonight to worship you, to give you honor and glory because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we love you. And we thank you in the name that is above every name. The name of Jesus and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. If you love Christmas, raise your hand. Okay. I, I love everything about Christmas. I love Christmas music. Jingle bell rock, jingle bells. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. All I want for Christmas is you. Hey, wife, I'm talking to you. I'm dreaming of a, no, rainy and cold in Florida. But it's going to be cold. How amazing. I love Christmas movies. I love Elf. It's a wonderful life. Christmas vacation with Cousin Eddie. Come on. I love four Christmases. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> I love Miracle on 34th Street. Oh. Man, yes. My girls, we used to watch that when they were younger. And it gets all up in my feels, my emotions. And my favorite quote in that movie is, if you can't accept anything on faith, then you are doomed to a life dominated by doubt. There's only two ways to understand your life. Through the lens of faith or through the lens of fear. And what is fear? It's faith that it won't work out. And God knew that we would deal with fear. He knew that there would be seasons in life where we would be afraid. It's the reason that he told us over and over in his word, do not fear. Do not be afraid. I love Christmas food. Anybody? You know, I just like to eat. I mean, you know, I like traditional turkey and macaroni and mashed potatoes but you know give me a filet and some seafood I, i'm happy yeah i love christmas football basketball i love santa come on i love santa yes i do i love santa how about you santa's real i don't care what ben boobin says i'm he's real i love everything good about christmas but the truth is christmas is not christmas without christ the baby in the manger was no ordinary baby. The baby in the manger was the arrival of God in the human flesh. The purpose of Jesus' birth was to offer all of us a new birth in Him. 
Jesus said in John chapter 3, verse 3, he, he said, I tell you the truth. Like he can lie. I mean, he's never sinned, so he can't lie. He says, unless you are born again, talking about a spiritual rebirth, you cannot, you, you will not see the kingdom of God. The story of Christmas is so much more than angels, animals, and a baby born in a barn. Jesus became one of us for us. The Bible tells us in John chapter 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then in verse 14, the Bible says the Word became flesh. He, he became a, a devouring fire. And the Bible says he made his dwelling among us. He left heaven, he put on skin, and he entered into our neighborhoods. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of what? Grace and truth. The birth of Jesus was for us, but about him. The Bible says in the book of Luke that Jesus came to seek and to save what was lost. What was lost? I was lost. You were lost. All of humanity was lost. We are born into sin, separated from a holy God. We need Jesus. Let this sink into your soul. Eternal God, who has always existed, became a single cell. An embryo, a baby, placenta nourished him. His tiny heart divided into chambers. Eternal God became one of us. Not just created us. Not just thinks about us. Not just near us or above us. But God Emmanuel with us. Invisible God became visible through Jesus. Jesus came to earth fully God and fully human. He experienced everything that you and I experience. He experienced hunger, anger, grief, weakness, temptation. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 4.15, watch this on the screen. We do not have a high priest who is unable to what? Sympathize with our weakness. But we, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin and i get it some of you would rather keep the humanity out of the incarnation because you think if you can keep him divine then you can keep him distant packaged and predictable if that's you don't do it let him into the mire and the muck of your messy life that's why he came why should i do that preacher because he will only pull you out of what you let him into He became one of us for us so that we can become one with him. And no, I don't know what you've encountered in 2020. It could be a big mess, but God is with you. He, he has not abandoned you. I promise you that. I promise when Satan peeked into that stable, he did not see eight pound, six ounce, sweet baby Jesus. No, sir, he saw an infant warrior that would burst from that manger one day and free humanity from the slavery of sin. Right. On that, yeah, come on. You're going to clap, clap it up. <laughs> Give it up for Jesus. On that first Christmas, over 2,000 years ago, invisible God put on an earthly suit to inform the forces of hell. I came to planet Earth to rescue humanity from the darkness. Aren't you glad that Jesus came to rescue us? In John chapter 12, verse 46, Jesus said, I have come as a light to shine in this what? Dark world. We live in a dark world. And it's getting darker day after day after day. I have come as a light to shine in this dark world. Watch this. So that all who put their trust in me. So that all who put their trust in me. There's a choice. There's free will. Will no longer remain in the dark. In Luke chapter 2 verse 10. 
This is the Christmas story. The angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of what great joy that will be for some people, most people, no, all people. You have a choice. You have free will. You can pursue happiness or you can pursue joy. Happiness is built on moments that comes and goes. And sadly, a lot of people spend their entire lives chasing after one moment of happiness. And when they finally get it, they realize it didn't keep them happy. It never filled that empty void inside of them. Happiness is temporary because it's based on our circumstances. It's based on our feelings. It's based on if we're getting what we want. But joy comes from a relationship with Christ in spite of our circumstances. The Bible says in Matthew 7, 24 through 27, watch this. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them, there's obedience required, will be, a, be, will be, will be like a wise man, a wise person who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who, who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish person who built their house on the sand. And the rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat against that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Sooner or later, the rain is going to fall in your life. Sooner or later, the floodwaters are going to rise in your life. Sooner or later, the winds are going to blow in your life. That doesn't make sense. That will challenge the foundation of your faith. Hashtag 2020 could be that. Jesus told us, in this world you will have trouble. You will encounter tribulation. You, you will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But then he said, but take heart. I have overcome the world. The Bible says in James chapter 1, and can I just be honest? I don't like this scripture. If I could remove scripture, this would not be in there. If I could take a, a permanent marker and just not be able to read it. Consider it pure joy. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face what? Trials. Count it what? Joy. Whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance Finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Can I ask you a question? Has 2020 increased your faith or decreased your faith? Are you growing in maturity because of what you face? Or are you running from the problems? Count it all joy. That's the only reason we can come to this building and be joyful is because of Jesus. Because of our relationship with him. Happiness will never get you through the seasons of life. They never will. You need joy. And the only way to access joy is through a relationship with Jesus. The Bible says in Luke 2.11, watch this. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. As we close, can I ask you a crazy question? Why did God send a Savior? He, he could have sent an advisor. We didn't need advice, did we? Right, he sent a Savior because we need one. We need a Savior. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. 
Jesus said in John 8, I am the light of the world. Watch this. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus did not leave the throne room of heaven and come to earth to help us save ourselves. He came to save us from ourselves. He sent a Savior because we need a Savior. And the manger is an invitation for you to place your entire trust in the Savior of the world. When Jesus was born, so was hope. And when every head bowed, every eye closed. When Jesus was born, so was hope. And so if you came in here tonight or jumped online, maybe someone invited you, maybe you just said, hey, you know what? I'm going to check it out. And you came. And if you got gut-wrenching honest, you don't have a relationship with God through Jesus. If that's you, this is your opportunity. No gimmicks, no games. I am not going to try to talk you into something. All I'm going to do is offer you the same thing God offered you in his word. An opportunity to say yes. Is Jesus knocking on the door of your heart? If so, this is your opportunity to say, yes, what do I do, pastor? You know what you do? You repent. You you repent of your sins and resign as the CEO of your life. The Bible says in Romans 10, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. So if you're here, and you've never said yes to Jesus, and you are ready, here's what you do. You just say, God, I surrender. I admit, I need you. And so the best that I know how, I am am placing all of my trust in you. I am confessing of my sin. Today, on December 24th, 2020, I'm giving you my life. I'm yours. I'm no longer mine. With heads bowed and eyes still closed, if you prayed that prayer tonight, would you just raise your hand? Say, I've given my life to Christ tonight, Pastor. Anyone in the house? Anyone in the house? I think someone is pointing over here. If we've got a leader that can get them a Bible, that would be great. I want everyone to stand to your feet. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to close out 2020 at the Journey Church, worshiping our God who deserves our praise. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful for you. This has been a heck of a year. God, we have encountered anything and everything from A to Z. Many people walked in here with just burdens and troubles and tribulations. Father, I pray over them tonight. God, would you surround them with your presence, comfort them, Father, only like you can. God, we love you. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Declare one more time. Let's lift it up. Hey, you turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. Cause you're the only one who can say. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only.
the person who said yes to Jesus tonight. You know, Scripture says that there's a party in heaven right now over one person who says yes to him. And I pray that never gets old to us. I pray it never becomes routine that we can celebrate a life that was changed tonight by the power of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for joining us online. Uh, if you said yes to Jesus and you're joining us online, we just need you to comment that, yes to Jesus. We want to follow up with you and help you know how to continue walking that out. Um, this weekend, Sunday is last Sunday, so we will not be meeting in the building. You guys enjoy your families, serve your communities. We can't wait to be back with you. January 3rd, first Sunday, 2021, brand new experience time, 10 a.m. Mark that down. Watch social media. We'll remind you. Josh Rye, one of our overseers, will be here speaking. You don't want to miss it. Bring someone with you. Uh, we love you guys. Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next year. I wanted to say that.